We've got uh, we've got our buddy Chris Alfano here, uh, 360 Mining. What's up, dude? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Big You're time, so- uh, big time listener, big fan here. <laughs> Dude, we, so we connected in Austin at TBC. We couldn't get you. We couldn't get you back to the the casting couch at the uh, <laughs> yeah. at the yeah, you at the out, Airbnb. Man. You weren't able to make it there. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a funny story. You, you weren't actually you were at Empower, but you checked in and then you literally left last year. And so yeah. now, this year you get to actually enjoy it. Yes. Congrats. Yes. Thank you. It was a, <laughs> a nice wave goodbye as I pulled in and immediately pulled back out uh, to Dallas for. For a meeting, but uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here this year. I'm honored to get the uh, nod on the twice the the night before Empower. So yeah, man, pretty, you're pretty you're stoked. starting off the marathon of episodes we're about to do. We're doing a so. lot of episodes, so this is going to go out uh, right after Empower, probably. And so we are taking advantage of everybody being in town, right? You know, as everybody's coming into town for Empower, uh, just lining up as much podcast. So we've got our uh, our whiskey here, uh, some a little bit a little bit of Yellowstone. We're recording for the next five hours, and this is one of three. So. I want to see how much of that's left. By the <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. We're gonna, uh, I'm going to drink it all. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee it's gone. Is there another bottle? Oh, yeah, yeah, there is another bottle. All right. So uh, also, really quickly, just thanks, everybody, for listening to the show. Like, it's, yeah. been, it's, been, it's been really, really uh, well-recepted. Uh, a lot of great feedback. Lisa's episode did really well, went viral and stuff. But back to you, Chris. What do you guys do? Yeah. So 360 Mining is a vertically integrated Bitcoin mining company. Um, really, it's kind of a, like a two-headed beast. So um, you think of vertical integration in Bitcoin mining, and you think of like companies like Riot mm-hmm. that you know build their own facilities, maybe host their own miners, uh, maybe own their own substation. But uh, 360 really is vertically integrated down to where the energy originates. Um, so we actually produce the energy all the way through the generation of electricity into mining Bitcoin. And so really what that looks like for us on, on one end is... Uh, fully functioning upstream owner operator of uh, natural gas wells, uh, produce them just like any other oil and gas guy would. And then, uh, you know, company owned generators all the way into like a, a self mining uh, operation there. And, um, you know, I think it provides a lot of benefits. Obviously, it's on the, the bottom end of the cost curve for uh, operating costs to produce Bitcoin, uh, you know, no contracts, no PPAs, just decades of Mm-hmm. fixed cost power really as long as we can you know pr- continue to produce the wells and these uh gas wells will produce for you know decades and decades so i think you guys are one of the few who are actually vertically integrated <laughs> actually owning the oil and gas assets and then also producing the bitcoin at the same time how i think that's also the thesis of standard bitcoin correct right right, right. With, yeah with tom, and, with tom, with tom and, and marty those, yeah and those guys um, but yeah. i think you're the first one who found the show who actually well well, Gideon as well, but Gideon I don't think but I don't think he's actually mining on his. Yeah, walls. no, he's he's mostly a grid miner. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But so on that note, um, oil and gas guy. Yeah, I'm presuming. Did, how did you guys get going on that? Uh, anything but an oil yeah. and gas guy. Um, really, my background is in you know I studied uh, finance and economics at SMU in mm-hmm. Dallas, and you know then went into uh, starting a SaaS platform for portfolio management companies. So the furthest thing away from oil and gas, we were building products for, um, you know, private debt uh, hedge funds and just kind of being a technologist and starting my own company and, you know, being in finance, building financial products and always kind of been attracted to Bitcoin. So after, you know, we sold that company in 2021, we were looking for um, a way to kind of make our passion Bitcoin a career and, you know, didn't know if that was going to be this is the time of like all the craziness and DeFi stuff. Like, I don't know, we're going to build something on Bitcoin or what are we going to do? And just started networking around Austin, met a miner um, that really kind of got me looking at uh, Bitcoin mining and, you know, being a software guy and knowing how hard it is to like launch a product and find product market fit and hit critical mass. And then looking at Bitcoin mining and my naive self at the time is like, oh, you just plug in a computer and it makes like 90 <laughs> percent gross margins. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> this is when Bitcoin, you know, difficulty was low and Bitcoin was at like 60 grand. And so um Knew I wanted to kind of get into Bitcoin mining, do something really in the real world, uh, you know, not sitting behind a desk all the time and saw everybody flocking to the grid. And, um, you know, again, at that time, it didn't matter if you were paying seven cents, eight cents, nine cents, really, which mattered is you're plugging in miners, right. you're, you're splitting hairs on, you know, 80 percent to 90 percent gross margin. So it didn't really matter. We kind of wanted to build something that was sustainable in kind of any Bitcoin market. Um, and so we knew that meant, you know, how do we control our own destiny? That's through power and electricity and uh, owning the assets ourselves. And then being in Texas, it's like, okay, what are our options if we want to truly vertically integrate? And 
it just became obvious that natural gas is abundant. Brought in a partner who, like, I know how to operate natural gas assets. That was going to yeah. be my next question is, who's operating for you guys if you guys aren't kind of from the oil and gas space? Yeah. So we operate, like, we're the operating company as right. well as the owner. Um, my partner, Robert Clark, has longtime petroleum engineer, um, gone to Anadarko and then uh, so private equity. I'm from Anadarko. Okay. When was he there? So Griffin Habe said the same thing. Right. I was like, who yeah. is this Robert Clark mysterious figure? He was there, um, gosh, 2006 maybe? Okay. Uh, he might be listening and being like, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't quite know. I think he was there for a while, um, did some stuff in, in Wyoming, and um, then- I did stuff in Wyoming. How okay. do I not know this dude? After, well, I'll pull up, the, yeah. pull up the picture and- yeah, yeah, I need to I need to see a picture of this guy. Yeah. Justin, Justin is here. Robert Clark. Yeah, I know. How do you <laughs> it's know? Like I don't Robert Clark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so no, I mean, look, I, I will be the first to admit, like, I'm the dumbest guy in the room across all segments. Like, I cast a wide net. I don't necessarily am super deep. I'm not an expert in oil and gas. I'm not an expert in Bitcoin. My wide and steep. Yeah. yeah hey, right. So journalists run the world. That's right. Yeah. Like, I got the the people <laughs> who are extremely talented and extremely smart in each you know facet of the business and. I would say the smartest guy at the company is the uh, pumper mm, that we ended yeah. up hiring from the company that originally drilled the wells that we ended up purchasing. And like, I've learned more from him than I have anybody. And he's now, the, did you hear that from an oil and gas guy? Cause every oil and gas operations engineer I talked to is like pumpers, the smartest dude. You got to always talk to the pumper. I, that did is, you discover that is, this on your that own, is Chris? completely organic. Wow. I don't know oil and gas people hardly. That's uh, impressive. So like yeah. it, you actually dropped a little negative wisdom there that a lot of people don't like realize or maybe appreciate It's like when you, when you buy oil and gas assets, it's kind of just a common thing that like, the pumper just kind of comes yeah. along with it. Yeah. You know, yeah, you and don't so, want to lose them. And you don't want to lose no. them because like they may have worked these, like usually they live locally. They, they, they may work for you exclusively or they, maybe they're just contracts and they work, you know, for like five different operators, you know, pump 20 different wells. Like the pumper that we had up in, up in Tulsa was 82 years old yeah. and it had been a pumper for like 65 yeah. years, dude. Yeah. This yeah. guy's hands were just like, they weren't, he wasn't a big person. He was a small person, but his hands were so weathered from being in the <laughs> yeah. field for 60 years. Like, it, like, like this guy, together. he just like, knew anything and everything. No, it just like crushes your yeah. hand when he's yeah. it. And like, dude, they're, they're a gold mine of just like, just all knowledge. this field knowledge. And they will say that they're a dying breed. Our guy oh, yeah. has been pumping these wells since they were drilled in 2005. And, you know, I keep telling him, I was like, we got to get like backup, like single man risk. Like you got to get got to get another pumper. It's like, I just don't trust any of these kids nowadays. Yeah. It's like our generation, you know, Dan, these guys are the hardest working guys. And like, yeah. I'm part of the millennial generation where it's like, you know, if I ask someone my age that was pumping wells to get up there at 1am when the compressor goes down, like they ain't going to do it. He's not <laughs> answering the phone. Like Dan is, you know, seven days a week, 24, 52 uh, weeks these guys a year. Are hard to find. He's, he's a, you know, and for the Bitcoiners breed. who are listening, like what the fuck is a pumper? It's like, you're like the caretaker of the well. You're not actually physically pumping anything. I mean, you're like a maintenance guy, right? So like something goes down, the well goes down. They're kind of like your general kind of contractor in a way. Like they'll fix a lot of things themselves, but they'll coordinate usually with electricians for and sure. they'll, they'll call in your runs for you. Make sure you have your loads come in picked up. Like they're kind of like your liaison Kind of they're like almost like the field. parent to the well, man. They really the are. The wells really that have, like, yeah. they're all temperamental. They're like they're little kids. Totally. You know? yeah. And they, yeah. And they have different things that they consistently have a problem with. And these pumpers learn, like, oh, man, that's freaking, you know, the, the daisy number five over there. She oh, yeah. always does this. And so, it, you know, they kind of learn how to how to address the problems sure. as they rise and they, they get used to that history of them. It's so weird. It's making me all sentimental. Making me want to get back in the operating yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so Dan was pumping, uh, I think like 65 wells before yeah. we ended up buying the package and brought them on full time. And so you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. Each well is like its own beast and they got, you know, their own uh, preferences and certain things will trigger them. And so having Dan just focus on like our wells, which, you know, we only have six up in, on, on that particular asset in Fort Worth uh, has really helped, you know, uptime for mining. Like that's super important. Like uh, LOE keeping that down, like that's really important. So it's just been like uh, a heaven send having, right. having Dan there just couldn't have, couldn't work without, you know, those guys. So I got another question um, without, you know, this is the lawyer oil and gas lawyer brain of mine, um, it's, which is not very good, but um, how do you guys handle the royalty situation on that? Because uh, that is, as an oil and gas attorney, I get asked that all the time. Right. Is like, how is this going to impact the royalties? 
Um, so being fully integrated and being the miner, do you have like separate entities set up or like how do you handle the the royalty situation? On yeah, this? so we don't have separate entities mm-hmm. set up. It's all under one entity, mm-hmm. you know, subject to change potentially in the future. But, um, you know, all, each asset's going to have different leases, right? And when we looked at the leases of this asset before we even bought it, we brought in uh, some oil and gas attorneys mm-hmm. to look at them because, you know, our, our NRI is 70% in the asset. So 30% of top line revenue, we have to pay out to our working interest and royalty owners. And if that's 30% of the Bitcoin mind, like all mm-hmm. of a sudden this business model is, it's completely, the economics yeah. are completely different in a, a really negative way if you have to pay out the Bitcoin. Yeah. So when we had all those leases reviewed, um, you know, the attorneys basically came back and said, look, it says, you know, market rate of natural gas. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the argument would be made that in uh, the Barnett, like the market rate of natural gas is the price of natural gas, like uh, at the hub that it's sold into. And right. it's like the only way that's going to change for you guys is if like the majority of the market turns into Bitcoin, right? So if every other operator started mining Bitcoin and, you know, maybe someone could interpret the market rate of natural gas changing. So, so do you guys based, go based on consumption uh, for the generators and then use that metric and then just what's like probably two dollars in mcf right now haven't looked and then you just pay out the royalty yeah, owners that max way. pain uh yeah so like a big distinction is our asset is tied into the pipeline like this is not stranded gas like that's probably the biggest misconception when people think of 360 mining it's like oh a flare gas miner mm-hmm. these guys are doing stranded like everybody we are, assumes that all, always yeah you yeah. think of gas to bitcoin you're thinking of a flare, flare right this is completely different this is like traditional you know pipeline connected natural gas I'm using bitcoin as a way to optimize the you know, um, profitability per molecule. Uh, to answer your question, like we actually end up selling gas to the pipeline every month, whether that's any excess that the generators are not consuming or, you know, there might be more profitable like it was in August. I was going to say, that's the flip key. that switch. Yeah. That, that is the key. So we've been uh, talking about this and you're yeah. the first one who's actually saying, hey, we're actually, I mean, Dan and Amalgamated Sludge, mm-hmm. we talked about that a little bit in New Mexico, but first person on the podcast to kind of talk about having that optionality of, you know, selling to the market huge. or, or, you know, hashing corn. So right. how That's are you, how are you, it, yeah. how are you doing that? Are you, have you just, are you, is there like a pipe with you just fucking. It truly is like, you go back to the pumper, like there's a fork in the pipe yeah, and there's a valve and it's like, mm-hmm. you want to open it fully to Bitcoin mining. Do you want to open it fully to the sales line? Do you want to do 50, 50, 80, 20? And like based off of, no you know, shit. hash price and based off of, you know, kind of the market rate of natural gas. You can kind of optimize uh, that way. So on your model, then, were you guys kind of looking at it from a standpoint of like, we're going to buy the asset for X, our mining equipment, because it's already, you're not drilling the well, right? You're Correct. buying existing production PDP. Correct. <clears throat> you buy the PDP gas. Are you, are you doing oil sales as well? Or is it no, just it's gas? No, it's just dry gas. gas. Yeah. Okay. So you buy the PDP gas, and then you're putting, you're also factoring your capital expenditure for your mining equipment, right? Right. And... I guess, yeah, you just kind of look at it from the standpoint of what's more profitable that day, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of your guys' model. Yeah, and I mean, there's nuance there with with natural gas, which, you know, I'll get into. But yeah, we looked at it like, you know, from the mining lens, this is attractive, right? Mm -hmm. It's the bottom 5% of the cost curve for production costs, right? It would make sense, right? The energy originates at the well, and the guys, you know, at the end of the supply chain on the grid, that molecule's been bought and sold, bought and sold, bought and sold you know, five times, like from just a price perspective, it's attractive from a longevity perspective. It's attractive, right? As long as we can produce the wells, like yeah. we're not going to get rugged by the, you know, TDSP, who's going to change mm-hmm. our PPA right. or the fuel surcharge or any of that stuff, you know, it, by and large, it's a fixed cost. So, you know, and I think maybe potentially the most important is it's like extremely fast. Like people don't realize that like less than 2% of natural gas that's produced in America is either stranded or flared which means 98% of it is marketed, yeah. right? So you effectively have Zillow and Redfin of oil and gas where you have eBay of oil and gas where there's an abundance of these natural gas assets that are re- ready for purchase, right? And as soon as you can buy it, take over operation, and as soon as you can get generators and miners out there, you can be mining. So yes, the capital outlay to acquire natural gas assets, especially in a high gas price environment, is higher than you know dollar for dollar building the same megawatts maybe on the grid. but because you're building out faster means you're returning cash much faster um and you know you get the benefits of of decades you know it's a risk adjusted we just think it you know we think it's really attractive for for those reasons and it gives you optionality like that's the key yes you know to me anyway that 
you, we saw it when when we were mining at Jay too. Is like it having the flexibility of being able to sell gas when profitability tanks like it did. Right. Is I mean that's huge. It's a huge you know difference between you and a lot of the other miners mm-hmm. that are out there that are mining off gas is you know they're kind of they're beholden strictly to the profitability of bitcoin mining Absolutely. at the time and when we don't have a hedge market it's that's a really really risky situation it's so totally. that's why flare is like the thing that everybody thinks of because mm-hmm. you can go lock in a, a rate but it's also limited because like you said there's only two percent we found that too we, we were looking at wells in wyoming um and i think it was that out of all the flare gas in the state of Wyoming and all the wells that had flared at all in the years that we looked at it, guess how many actually flared more than yeah. 200 MCF a day for, I think, 180 days during the year? I think I've heard you. It was like one, right? Two. Two. Yeah. Two. Damn. And, and that's where people <clears throat> are really kind of missing the point. Like you guys mm-hmm. obviously have found mm-hmm. that if a well is being drilled, it's probably tied in somewhere. Right. It's just the like, vast majority of the cases is how it is. You don't want to drill well if you don't have something to do with the product. So, like, th- that's just the reality of it. But um, that doesn't mean there's not a place for the flare gas miners. Obviously, there sure. are. But I think for the industry to grow like it would need to from off-grid natural gas mining, they have to go this route that you're talking about, the fully integrated route. I think, once again, it's just it just shows that there's another business model. Right. Like, right. for for years, right. we have a whole series that we're going to release on, um, like, how to start an oil and gas company. And one of the first things you got to start off with is you got to understand that there's like seven or eight different kind of like very popular business models that companies follow. And then there's certain categories, like even within that of like kind of where you play, right? And so you've talked about assets that change hands, you know, five different times. It's because for some of the larger companies, the break even is really a lot higher than some of the smaller companies. And so even within the same business model, you can just kind of pass it down to the smaller, smaller companies and they're able to make more and more margin on those. So- how did you guys get started? So you talked about like, you know, you, you finding your oil and gas guy, right? And kind of piecing together the team and stuff. And you, once you guys had this thesis, you guys go out and raise a bunch of money. Did you just like piece together small assets? Like kind of walk us through yeah. like you guys getting started and like up until today. Yeah. So that's good because it'll kind of get back into the optionality stuff, which I definitely want to talk about uh, some more. But um, yeah, really, you know, uh, for better or for worse, I started the company in November of 2021, uh, <laughs> which the equivalent dollar per MCF of bit mining Bitcoin at that time was forty dollars an M. Uh, yeah, and was wonderful. Gas was five dollars, right? So wait, we, wait, wait, say that one more time so that we can get a clip. People, from this. yes, <laughs> actually do. If you're listening, I, an oil and gas guy with a non dedicated, non hedged gas, <laughs> even today in a depressed Bitcoin market, nine dollars an MCF. If you want to realize nine dollars an MCF. Bitcoin is is an option that you can enable in less than three months to yeah. completely blow out the economics of your the machine your matters depends what mine right. you're using but you're right yeah. I think I think it was I don't know if it was Griffin or it was somebody else maybe it was uh, Ryan Knuckles over at um, at Mothership okay. somebody yeah. somebody gave me access to a calculator to calculate what the net back per mm-hmm. m was and at the time when it was like sixty thousand dollar Bitcoin it was right around in power last mm-hmm. year it was like it was like you know, more than forty five yeah. And him and I was like, Jesus Christ! Once you and then once right. you see that, you can't, you can't unsee, it. unsee yeah. it. And then you we know get these people have had tell me though that I'm wrong, and that, that there's like, no, no way. There's no, there's no, no way. way. Like, yeah, it's, right. it's too good to be true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. truly, you, you can't unsee it. And it's like catnip. Once you get a taste of it, mm. it's uh, well, I've never done catnip. But I assume <laughs> if I was a cat, that's kind of what <laughs> yeah. it would be like. <laughs> yeah, I've done things uh, that are like catnip. Yeah. I'm not a cat, so yeah, yeah. That reminds me. This is way off topic, but have you seen? You guys have had to see that video that the lawyer that was in uh, trial over Zoom. Yeah, he goes, was, "I'm not a cat. I'm not a cat. <laughs> I promise." Your Honor, it's got a cat it's, filter it's on. It's freaking filter hilarious. On, yeah. it, you see his eyes like moving down. They're like, <laughs> you can tell he's nervous. Mouth is moving on the cat. Sorry, <laughs> no, that's that is literally one of my favorite videos ever. It's hilarious. All right, so we cut you. So uh, we started. Yeah, so we, started. so we started in a a pretty, you know, if you look back, hindsight, 2020, you know, to start with. Uh, at $97 a terahash is what we acquired our first miners at, you know, gas was at $5. So the acquisition cost of a 400 MCF a day property was substantial. Yeah. Um, that, but you know, the, the point is like, you know, you put those things together, you build a facility, um, you get generators, the whole thing. Uh, we, you, you know, and, and to put it in context, like the, the speed, like we close on the gas asset on November 1st of 2021. 
and we were mining on uh, Valentine's Day of That's 2022. Awesome. So just the process of going like we aren't even an oil and gas company to establishing and bonding and the railroad commission, all the stuff to actually taking down our first asset to actually using that gas to mine Bitcoin fully vertically integrated in less than three months was was pretty cool. And we continued to mine Bitcoin through uh, August. Right. And here's kind of where the optionality starts coming. This is where it got really cool is like, OK, well, what happened in August? Well, gas ran up to nine dollars an M. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin, you know, plummeted to you know, the equivalent of, you know, call it $7 an M. Uh, obviously, there's more OPEX in running a Bitcoin mine. So like the profitability, you know, is, is lower and the top line revenue is lower at that time. And so we made this decision to say, let's shut off the Bitcoin mine, exclusively sell gas while other people are, you know, have, struggling to stay solvent. We were maintaining awesome profitability. And it was at that time that, you know, having this dual commodity thing, having the ability to invest in natural gas and having the ability to invest in Bitcoin is really cool because at that time, you know, we were actually able to raise another equity round and we refract three of our wells that were drilled in 2005. So we had a, a huge, you know, well, for me, it was like a, not being an oil and gas guy. It was like a big deal, <laughs> right? To get too, Halliburton yeah. and the whole thing and and the sand and, and, and you know, pumping the water out of the lake and the right of ways and all that stuff to, you know, stimulate these wells. And we took our our little package there, um, you know, from 400 MCF a day to 2,500 MCF a day. Nice. Damn. So, you know, I but, think it qualifies you as an oil and gas guy now. Yeah, I think you are I, now an oil you're, and you're gas not guy. an imposter I, anymore. Okay. Dude. Like, yeah. You, I think you're, you're thinking I, oil and gas. I've guy. met Most a lot of, of people in this space are LARPers on the mining side. Yeah. Not, but you might have been a LARPer. Sorry, he's not anymore. Though. You're not a LARPer. You're not, a, not a LARPer. I'm, I'm honest. I'm, yeah. a, I'm in great company You've been, here. You've been knighted, dude. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. Yes. We, Thank we need, you. <laughs> we need, in addition to the we, tinfoil I, I, hats, we need, yeah. we need, like we need a, some props. Yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> yeah. So that was um, that was a really cool experience. Obviously, we did not hedge our gas price. So we're we're feeling that now. Mm. But, uh, you know, the point was, look, you know, we can increase our gas production at this asset. You know, which is going to be a much more attractive way to get gas than buying net new assets. Um, you know, for you know, for a fraction of the cost of buying net new assets, and all the while, like we're increasing our ability to mine Bitcoin at this site, right? So the total power capacity that's available to us on this particular asset has gone, you know, way up. Now, fast forward another six months. Okay, now gas is at two dollars an M. Bitcoin has you know moved off its lows to about twenty three thousand. So now maybe nine dollars an M. So now we're mining Bitcoin again, and now the same situation presents itself, which at $2 an M, you have these people who are just gas operators really struggling to break even. You have these higher LOE type mm -hmm. gas assets that are cash flow negative or, you know, and if you're, it's cash flow negative or break even, it's a liability. So what we're seeing now is like a lot of distressed gas assets that are fire sailing, right? So for 360, like we're able to spend a very, very low amount of mm -hmm. dollars to acquire net new assets to kind of replicate this model and that's only possible because of this dual commodity optionality like we we say like we have two monocles like we have the natural gas monocle and the bitcoin monocle and being able to look at a natural gas asset through bitcoin economics and apply bitcoin economics to it well that is a totally different economic set that makes taking down these assets viable right so if, if gas is at two bucks after you get paid out from the pipeline you might be making 150 but if it costs you you know a buck 50 to produce the well you know, it's not viable, but we could take that same buck 50 at a dollar to it. So 250 to produce it and generate power. And if Bitcoin's making nine dollars, well, that's a great asset right there. Right. So I think that's a, a really cool thing about the model is, you know, it's it's Bitcoin hedging natural gas and it's natural gas hedging Bitcoin. And so, you know, you're not all in on Bitcoin. You're not all in on natural gas. And just so happens over the past you know nine months, that hedge is like played out perfectly. Not to right. say they're uncorrelated, but. Um, when know, both are extremely not, volatile but. and essentially treated as commodities, right? It's like, yeah. it's, that's so smart. It's such a good business. It's funny because natural gas is by far the more volatile commodity yeah. over the past nine months. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely some serious pressure. 14% <laughs> swing yesterday. I didn't, I didn't look at Was it. Was it yesterday? 14%? Yeah. Like inched up last week and then just plummeted. And it's wow. all like weather predictions. And those weathermen yeah. are the least reliable yeah, people. Know, they're like that has got to be the easiest profession of all yeah. time. Those people are just you know, if they're spouting out whatever they want to say yeah. about the weather models. There's a like, really good uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm uh, episode about yeah. weathermen. Yeah. Because this dude wants a golf course all to himself all the time. So he <laughs> he constantly, like, screws up the weather forecast on purpose. Oh, Keep everybody off the course. Um, you mentioned that you guys didn't hedge on this 
kind of that last mm-hmm. run, which I understand if you're playing that optionality stuff. Do you think, though, going forward, you might hedge a portion of that gas yeah. if we see prices yeah. kind of absolutely you know, spike like that? You know, I'll, I'll attribute that to about the 10,000 things we mm-hmm. did wrong. You know, when you first start this thing, like you don't There's know what you don't know. Stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So <clears throat> you look back at it, but the reality is like you don't want to be building Bitcoin mining facilities to 2,500 MCF a day hot off a of frack because right. that's yeah. rapidly depleting. Right. Right. So the whole, you know, the whole idea here was like we're going to build to 1,000 MCF a day and that's where we're going to be like our mining base load gas mm-hmm. consumption. And over time, that that gas is going to fall to that point. Right. So what we probably should have done was hedge out that 1500 MCF a day that slowly tapers off. So like we could lock in that gas price on the gas that we were going to sell no matter what, because just, you know, it doesn't make sense to, again, like build out facilities for, you know, gas that's not going to be there next month. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely in yeah. hindsight, we should have done that. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's cool. Um, I wondered about that because it's almost like you're taking away your optionality if you hedge sure. too much. So mm-hmm. Um, are you guys building your own containers or what do you, what are you doing? On no, side? no, we're buying, uh, yeah. containers. Uh, we are an immersion miner. Okay. Um, so, so feel that, free to plug anybody if you like or not. Yeah. yeah. To you. Yeah. Have you tried I, multiple groups? We have. And you know, I'm not here to say what <laughs> we're going to put you on the spot, Chris. <laughs> worked or didn't work. I'll tell you there's a solution we deployed that did not work. Um, mm. that was a, a big struggle for us. What color? Are there <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna say it online. I, sorry, guys. We'll talk about it. Right, we'll talk about it. I don't want to. I don't want to bash anybody. The point is, they made it right. right. You know, after a long time, we ended up getting 100 percent of our money back that yeah. we were able to redeploy in a new system called uh, Arctic Systems uh, out of Spartanburg, South Carolina, and you know, one of the few that actually make a, a turnkey immersion container. Nice. That actually works. And so, what, what kind of miners do you guys run? Because in the last episode, we talked. Uh, the Luxor guys walked us through uh you know bitmain, bitmain what's, what's miners and uh canon. canon and just comparisons yeah of it was like it was like it was like new to me so i'm curious if you're like yeah. a- we run s19 j pros okay um it's you know we see a lot of stuff in what's miners like being tanks you know we definitely want to as we continue to grow we're going to kind of diversify out a little bit and test a, a couple different uh models but you know, we run the S nineteens, and there's tons of research on overclocking and underclocking, and yeah. right. joules to terahash and efficiency and all that stuff. So, you know, it's part of it, right? It's part of like our whole mission. Well, not our whole mission, but part of the mission is like how do we maximize the value of a gas molecule? And like we look at that as like how does we make a single gas molecule make the most profitability possible? And in some markets, that means you know, hey, you should overclock it like crazy, overclock the miner like crazy to reach this outsized return. In other markets, it's like actually underclocking the miner can you know, limit your cost yeah. um, and, you know, produce more profitability uh, at that molecule level. Okay. Tell us where you're from again. You said it earlier, but I want everybody. Yeah. Like California. Yeah. Area. From uh, Manhattan Beach, California. Oh, yeah. So we talked about Missouri nachos, which are Cool Ranch Doritos and French onion dip. Oh, it's the best. I Sounds encourage good. everyone to try those out. Yeah. <laughs> he has a really interesting one that I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to get some tonight. Yeah, well, uh, I hope I don't get put on blast by the California people cuz I'm not this this is uh maybe it's not a California nachos <laughs> thing. We got pretty good Mexican food there, but this is the uh instead of Doritos and French onion dip, you go flaming hot Cheetos and cream cheese. Yeah, that's true. Have you tried it? Yeah. I live in California. Yeah, you lived yeah. in California. Yeah. There's also another thing in addition to that that we had I, you were only able to get it on base at Camp Pendleton. I couldn't like go okay. out in the city and find it, but you know you got your taco trucks, right? They're everywhere, Ooh. everywhere here. They're everywhere in California. California just, burrito. It's just yeah, it's different. Yep. But a California burrito, but with the French fries in it. Yes. Yeah, with the yeah. guacamole and the it's sour cream. And like, yeah, oh, the carne asada. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> dude, we had that yeah, right outside the PX, dude. I would get one. I'd get like I don't know, like that three times a week. Like that was just like what <laughs> I ate. So stationed you know? at Camp Pendleton, were you going to like San Onofre and, and Trestles oh, yeah. and all, all that? Every, oh, yeah. so all of that, dude. It? dude, I was everywhere. I'm yeah. a terrible surfer, but I tried. Yeah. I tried a lot. I, and um, I like just stuck to, I stuck to tearing up uh, um, Palomar Mountain on my motorcycle. That was yeah. one thing I was good at. So <laughs> I just enough. did a lot of that. Well, how did you get here? So I got here. So. Where I grew up, Manhattan Beach, it's like an awesome little, you know, beach community, but it's also a bubble, right? Like there's, it's just a bubble. Yeah. Um, so I knew like, you know, at the time of graduating college, I was just so sick of like being in this bubble. I wanted to get out. Um, I only applied to out-of-state schools. And so 
um, I ended up going to SMU in Dallas. And then that's where I ended up meeting my wife uh, when we were sophomores at SMU. And, you know, got married right after college. And now we have three kids and I'm on the Texas program. And <laughs> next thing you know, I'm, I'm living in Austin, Texas. So, yeah, we're. Uh, Austin's you know, awesome. I mean, yeah, we love Austin. It's great. I, I, I love it. over there. You guys in the city and the outskirts? We're in the city. Yeah, yeah we're, we're about 10 minutes from from downtown. Pretty okay. close to UT, but uh, it's great. Yeah, three little kids, man. It's a. Uh, it's awesome to you? have her parents, you know, close by, yeah. built-in babysitters. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> that's wonderful. Here. That's wonderful. What What did she say when you were like, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get into some Bitcoin mining"? Was it like awesome, cool, really excited about this, or was it like, "What the hell are you talking about?" You, you yeah, do what? she was really stoked. I was yeah. starting another company because, oh, like, okay. you know, between the two companies, I went to work for another startup, and like, I was miserable. Mm -hmm. um, and so she was stoked I was doing that. She's like, "Great, I'm here to support you." What the fuck is Bitcoin? <laughs> yeah. Like an oil and gas? Like, what do you know about that? <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so it was uh yeah, no, I mean she's super supportive, but you know That's cool. Yeah, That's she good. Was, she was it's a good thing. That's yeah, a good thing. I'm lucky to have a lucky to have her and yeah, you know, good support oh, system great. around me to you know help a lot. Yeah. I brought my on the topic of empower and 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 orange pilling people. I brought my dad to empower last year. And uh <laughs> His entire takeaway was that he just got to hang out with Casey Donahue for three hours and drink uh, <laughs> silver bullets. Uh, did not pay attention to a fucking word <laughs> of the event and still just has no concept of like what Bitcoin actually is. Yeah, yeah no, my, my family, they just make fun of me all the time. They don't, they don't want to talk about it. They don't like dad. Okay. Bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Whatever, guys. Yeah, yeah, whatever. No, I got the yeah, same. I'm going to remember this when you want me to pay for college. So. Yeah. yeah. I, I got the same situation. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, in-laws and my parents, they don't necessarily get it. Yeah. They're like, I like my dollars. I don't have Venmo. Yeah. You know, <laughs> cash only. Oh, yeah. Uh, very digital gold. Bitcoin doesn't mean, you know, what the hell is that? Yeah. 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 So yeah, totally. it's been an uphill battle. I resonate with the uh, uh, lack of success, orange mm -hmm. pilling family members i but, try like every uh, like get yeah. together it's not for a I, lack of effort if no. i'm in like a social setting with like outside of this community and like i <laughs> just i go in hard trying to orange pill everybody and I, it's usually kind of a, it, i mean sometimes you get people who are like intellectually curious but a lot of times it's just a fool's errand because they're just like ah, I don't, man, uh, what is this dude you know? i think the hardest people to convince are your your fam those people close to you right you know it's like uh <laughs> shoot i mean I have so much more success talking to people outside that don't know me at all about Bitcoin than I do if I'm talking to anybody that knows me, which yeah. is probably an indictment on how people feel about me because they know me actually and they're like, you're full of shit. But, <laughs> uh, but it's true. I have way better, way better luck talking about people outside of this, but. Um, what, what is y'all's getting back to you guys? Like, what is your, like, what's the ambition for you guys? Like, so I thought it was really interesting when we talked to, uh, Steve Barber and he was like, listen, like we're, we're not in the game to be just, you know, a mining company or a mining equipment company. He was like, we want to be, you know, an oil and gas service company first and foremost. And then all the mining stuff that we offer is really just, it's a tool for these oil and gas companies. And I thought right. that was really interesting because totally. I'd never heard him talk about that until he came on the podcast. And so I'm curious for you guys, like. And I've said this to like a, a billion different companies. So don't take it the wrong way. Like, but what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, what's the, what's the ambitions? Like, where do you guys see this going? You know, three five years from now. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I think we see Bitcoin as a way for us to own energy assets. It's a it's a way for us to uh, produce energy and make a lot of Bitcoin doing it right so i look at 360 like as we continue to grow like you know the ambition here is to not just do you know 2500 mcf a day but how do we build out this this model across much larger assets and i think you know as we as i look at it like our our goal is to become a a major player in u.s natural gas and aside from that like we want to be a light to other companies that are similar to us and and prove out that like like dude like there is a better market for your gas and it's bitcoin and right. it's there for the taking and it is here and it is now and you are leaving you know bitcoin or dollars on the table by not taking advantage of it like i've always said that you know we firmly believe like the people who produce the power have all the leverage and it's the people that produce the natural gas that are powering the lights in the studio in here 
you know, and it's it's not the people at the end of the supply chain that are mining the Bitcoin, right? And, and you guys talk about the midstream and the opportunity in midstream. Like, I just think there's 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 such a massive opportunity for people to mine Bitcoin where energy is abundant. And whether that's at the well, whether that's at the processing or gathering facility, uh, at the power plant level, you know, any of those people can peel off the the watts or the MCF and and generate a potentially higher dollar per MCF figure. So, you know, for 360 that, you know, for us, that looks like growing, you know, our vertically integrated model. Um, you know, we think natural gas is super important to the U.S. Uh, strategically. Um, and, you know, we want to continue to invest and support that industry and continue to, you know, frack for Bitcoin and, uh, you know, grow out that that position. But, uh, you know, more broadly, like we want to like evangelize the the energy industry that like, you know, there is a There's way for options. you. There's more options, right? You don't have to be stuck to the single commodity risk. You know, whether that's natural gas or Bitcoin, like you can diversify your ability to, um, you know, make money. Are you speaking at Empower? No. Man, should get them. Because uh, like, I'll be a sub. If anyone backs out so. and gets, you know, sick, I'll, I'm here. I'm but on the sideline. I think it's a big deal that people need to understand that like we we've talked about this stuff before and just haven't like you mentioned too like we we have talked about that um but you guys are actually doing it because even even some of the groups that are out there just trying to do that might not be using str uh stranded or flared gas they're still doing it just they're only mining bitcoin right right and uh because they're probably buying gas from someone mm -hmm. um but this is literally like and same with grid stuff. Like if you have the ability to have another revenue stream that just gives you the time or the flexibility to make it through a bear market. Right. And we, I, I, I talk about this all the time, but the lack of the ability to hedge in Bitcoin is such a significant problem for people mm -hmm. staying afloat and making it through these long kind of, you know, crypto winners. I hate the word crypto, but yeah, crypto winners. I would we say, go I would say Gideon's word, but I can't remember. It's Thimble Venter, Thimble Thimble Venter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and by the time the by the time the winter arrives, like it's too late. It's too late. And that's the problem. You're screwed. Like, you know, I think, and and I am the first to admit, like a naive commodity guy, right? Mm -hmm. But when the times are good, you think the number just goes up, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And when the which tides we have turn, so many reasons late. to know that that's not true. Yes. You know what I mean? But yes. we always fall. Pray to that. When the thing is, there's going to be another bull market, and people are going to do it all over again for sure. And I've even had I've been at conferences where we're speaking, and like even people that are on the panel, are like, well, this is the last bear market we got, or this is you know they're we're going to have that. And I'm like, dude, no, this is we're going to always. That's like you saying that in oil and gas, right? There's always going to be a pullback, and there's always yeah. going to be a, a, a run up. It just it's the nature of like people getting excited about returns that go crazy. And, you know, they pour a bunch of capital in it because they just, we get punch drunk and just mm -hmm. do stupid stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. just yeah. human nature. So I like having flexibility and optionality is such a big deal. And yeah. I'm so here's, here's the one. third one. Like, so here's oh, the third another option. one. Yeah. So there's what? a third one that's not live yet, but it's, it's pretty interesting. So, Again, not being an oil and gas guy, like I'm not sure if this is like a universal statement. So, uh, full We're disclosure, judge, you very judge me hard. hard. Depending on wait, how wait, wait, wait. You are an oil and gas guy. Yeah, you're you are. New, you're, just a, you're just a new oil and gas I'm, guy. I'm, I'm new, new here. Uh, you know? He's one of these self deprecating guys. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. shucks, man. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I get it, Chris. I do yeah. it all the time. It's cool. You should see me in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what stinks about selling gas, at least for us, and I don't know if it's the same for oil or all gas assets, but you get paid out on the gas at the average price at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So that right. means if gas is $3, $3, $3, $3, in the middle of the month, it jumps to $10 for three days. And we say, okay, we're going to sell gas at $10 for three days. And then it comes back down to $3. Like we're not getting paid out at $10 for the amount of gas we sold during that window. We're just getting, um, you know, the average price for the month, which might be, you know, $3 and 25 cents. Like it doesn't matter Damn. if we sell the gas in the front end or the back end, like we get the average. So you don't get to take advantage of the swings. So that's where the third market comes in and like credit to the grid guys, like the whole, um, it's CLR live, and, you know, the ability yeah. to curtail, like it's the 15 minute or five minute market where like it's intervals and you can monetize in those little intervals where there's spikes. Right. So 
you have that same optionality as a generator at a small scale under 10 megawatts called distributed generation. It's like in ERCOT, you can be one to 10 megawatts distributed generator. So like we're currently working to interconnect our power generation to ERCOT, right? So now we can have three options, which is, you know, sell gas or generate power. And then if you generate power, well, you can sell that electricity back into the grid, you know, in real time and capture that real time swing. Well, that is a hedge. Yeah, in that's a great hedge. Well, and yeah. it's, it's, it's just another option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. In, in theory, if you have enough gas, that excess gas you have that you don't build your mine up for. I mean, mm -hmm. has anybody ever done that before? Is that a, is there that a common are, thing? There's midstream groups doing that. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know any miners, off grid miners doing distributed generation. Interesting. But, you know, you get, so you get the grid guys, right? And then they get the ability. There's all sorts of different curtailment programs, but the most rigorous ones will like net them back like a cent and a half to two cents mm -hmm. a kilowatt hour on their electricity price. And that's how they start claiming, you know, we're three and a half cents, four cents a kilowatt hour. But really, like their nameplate electricity cost is, is six cents, five, five and, and a half, half six yeah. cents, right? Yeah. So, but it's the CLR and all those rigorous mm -hmm. programs that have to curtail like that, mm -hmm. that, um, you know, gets them that price. So, like the same thing is true in distributed generation. It's like, you know, but our nameplate power cost is, you know, a cent and a half to produce the wells plus, you know, another cent to a cent and a half to generate power. So like we're at three cents and like we can get that same cent and a half to two cent rebate from the grid, you know, so we can drive our costs down further while also, you know, capturing the the upside in electricity <laughs> markets. Like we're, we're really excited about that, that third option too. And like we think like that three prong approach again, yeah. going back to like maximizing the value of gas like that's how you maximize the value of gas and like mm -hmm. gone are the days where you're you know I, in our opinion like it's only a matter of time until more people wake up to the fact that there is a better market for gas oh totally and i 100 agree and it might not be 100 percent of the time but over the last year it's been but, nearly 100 percent of the time but when you have that optionality though you are able to take advantage of what time is best and you make mm -hmm. it kind of 100 percent of the time between the three options right right and I know of groups that have told me they're midstream groups. Uh, they did a lot of di eh, distributed generation like that, where some power back to the grid, paying off their entire project in three or four days. Mm -hmm. Like it's super what? valuable potentially because like you get these crazy spikes, you get a winter storm come through, you get the crazy yeah. heat waves we have we have sometimes and and it's, uh, a, and it's the same market that right. like riot is curtailing it right. too. like it riot is. made Boom, 70 million, five million dollar yeah. check yeah in three yeah, days it's like oh shit. Know? okay i'm gonna sell all my power to the to the grid then that's so nuts yeah no that's it's super smart do you think you guys stay in texas i mean it's a great market for gas Appalachia's even better you know yeah. it's the largest gas field that we have in the, the right. lower 48 right you know, at least right so We'll go where the opportunity is. Yeah. And again, getting back to that 2% versus 98%, like there's so much opportunity mm -hmm. in Texas that, you know, for now we're in Texas, but as we continue to grow, I mean, absolutely expand the horizon. I mean, we have all sorts of ideas, like Bitcoin helps oil and gas in so many different ways, you know, and, and, you know, we have aspirations to, you know, be service providers. Like ultimately, I think that's where Bitcoin mining and the oil fields going, like it's gonna be the Schlumberger's and the you know, pipeline companies. That's what we were talking about too. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Yeah, it's a tool. No, yeah. Like it's yeah. a tool. Whether it's and it upstream. makes total sense for them to be the ones to go do it. It 100%. really does. Like 100%. they got the capital, they got the know how. Like yeah. It's a neat, compared to what they do on a day to day basis, this is not simple. Yeah. It's the generator simple. companies right. that are already leasing to these yeah. guys. Yeah. Like, why not just package up like a solution? Like it's a new product, yeah. right? And it's it could be the product that allows you to drill your well uh, two months faster before the pipeline gets there. It could be the project, you know, that the solution that lets you go drill for oil in places where you can't flare and there's no way of getting a pipeline. Like you just, you know, you can truck out the oil, you can't truck out the gas. And like, if there's no pipeline. Like Bitcoin can be that digital pipeline. Like Bitcoin is the offtake that never leaves the pad. And like, there's so many ways for that to to uh, manifest. So I don't know we're we're it's it's the right industry. We're oh. we're excited and. You know, I just think there's a ton of synergies between oil and gas and Bitcoin, and that's why Empower exists. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. You know, we're we're you know I'm just excited to be part of the industry. Yeah, no, we're I'm excited you are too, man. This is the first time I've ever really talked to you about it, and I couldn't agree more on everything you're saying so far. So, uh, I yeah, I think you're right on point on all that. And how many guys do you have over there at 360 right now? Yeah, it's it's small, just five. That's good yeah. though. It's great. Yeah. So you guys, I mean, it's a startup. That's a lot it's of stuff going into totally. Yeah, yeah. I'm like yeah. the 
my my title is the CEO, but I like to say like I'm the janitor, I'm <laughs> yeah, the court jester, right? like whatever needs to be yeah. done. I you know we all that's you feel like that never ends. Yeah, yeah, it, does. <laughs> like it yeah. just it it's just stays whatever that way for needs forever. To be done. Well, what is your guys' plan? Jake asked you that, but are you guys wanting to? I mean, obviously scaling is mm-hmm. obviously something everybody's yeah. going to want to do. But are you? Do you have designs on like? I don't know, going public at some point, or you guys want to get picked off by somebody, or you just want to keep running a business and grow organically? And yeah, no, I mean, you're looking for investors, right? Yeah, stuff? we're we're looking to grow the company, right? And and I think eventually exit, mm-hmm. um, whether that's to the public markets or or somewhere else. Like the focus now is building this, you know, replicating this model across much larger gas assets, right? Right. So how do we, you know, be a formidable force in mining from like a exahash perspective? Uh, as well as like a gas player. And, you know, I think that could be an attractive acquisition target for an oil and gas company who wants to, that toolkit, wants that diversification. It could be a miner that, you know, realizes they need to get closer to where energy um, originates. So like the number one focus is like, hey, let's continue to replicate this model. But beyond mm-hmm. that, like, you know, there's a way to help the other 97.999% of operators that mm-hmm. own all that gas uh, and help them kind of enable this. Like we see a lot of opportunity being like a service provider and in traditional oil and gas terms, like, you know, we can build it out for them and manage it and like get a royalty of Bitcoin. So like it's a way for us to grow our hash rate as a company without deploying any capital. Like the That's thing right. about these guys is like Bitcoin is um, not their specialty. It's, it's, and it's not easy either. And like, we know that now and neither is oil and gas, right? So mm-hmm. I think that's why a lot of people shy away. But if you had the solutions provider that could come in and, and build it out for you and operate it. And then like we could get a royalty of the hash rate. Like that's something we're looking at. So th- there's a lot of ways to add value, you know, just for us and our model, but like beyond into like the broader um, oil and gas ecosystem. I'm, so that's what we're working on. Right I'm now. thinking about like you go to a miner's website and it's like, oh, we, you know, so many extra hash. Here's how much Bitcoin we've mined over the last I don't know, year or whatever. You go to an oil and gas company's uh, side and it's like, here's how much oil is produced. And here's how much gas is produced. And I'm imagining you guys in the future, and it's just like, oh, well, here's, here's how much yeah. we're mining, and then here's also how much we're producing in gas. Like, it's a really cool. And then you can like foot that. Both those two yeah. things come together to say nine dollars in MCF. And yeah, dude, that's, you know, that's, that's that, so that's so fucking cool. Now, you guys are on the cutting edge of like we've we've talked about this time and time again of the the being vertically integrated and owning owning the power, owning the energy yeah. is is a major major competitive advantage. And so it's so cool that you guys not only take advantage of the optionality, but also this kind of like third thing. Of being able to take advantage of you know the the spikes with demand response and almost treat that like as a hedge as well like you like you talked about like how the guys at Riot are doing that and so I'm super excited for you guys and I'm super excited to follow this journey and um, now I'm kicking myself for not getting you involved in in power because this should be like an entire like this should be like an entire topic kind of by itself but there's always next year yeah I'm in. <laughs> you, know, you know where to find me and uh this is only my second time to houston so i'm sure is it I'll, really i'll be back yeah the first the time first time was last well, year the, in power the, 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 that, that <laughs> doesn't count because like i hardly got out of the car <laughs> right. but i did go to nape uh this year oh, okay and that's so right. yeah that's that was like saying. my first uh foray the first so time you actually like, did anything in houston yeah yeah, so, yeah. Um, houston's so. not a bad place man there's really good people here um obviously the the only gas kind of hub that it is is tremendous and the, the overlap with bitcoin mining i think makes sure. it such an ideal spot for obviously a group like you guys that are kind of your dual hats We're lucky yeah. yeah lucky to yeah. be you know in texas and i love it man yeah. i think that I've, i'm excited about you guys i'm gonna i'm going to do a better job of following you guys all right so, well uh yeah i, I like it that's that's good stuff let's do it dude this has been a blast yeah so um, if anybody wants to follow you guys uh, are you on twitter Yes, okay. uh, 360 Mining on Twitter. My Twitter's uh, Chris Alfano 360, and uh, that's kind of where all our stuff is. Mm-hmm. And then our website's 360mining.com. But, uh, Sweet, I got man. some pretty poor takes on on Twitter. <laughs> you can see some <laughs> some bad dad jokes over there. So yeah, come on. Uh, I know this takes about eight times to set up, but I'm so glad we made this happen because this has been so eye opening. Yeah, yeah well, I appreciate really good. you guys. Really good, definitely. Oh, I'm excited, man. Thanks, man. Well, y'all, uh, if you like the episode, take two seconds, share with your friends, leave us a rating review. Pretty much the entire Bitcoin mining community is listening to the podcast. So thank you guys so much. Thanks to all of our guests. Um, this has been amazing. Uh, yeah. One down, two more to go for the day. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you.